YouTube. Um, I'm Vicky Thornley and um, I'm here with Robert and Robert too, um, Ross and, um, oh, it says Sophia, but I'm guessing that's not. Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, sorry. Um, and we're going to be cooking um, cauliflower and lentil curry tonight. Um, so it's an all in um, aid of Kids Out charity, which I'm a patron of. Um, so it was all about raising as much money as we could. So thank you very much to Robert for entering, um, raising money and congratulations on winning. Um, so should we get started with cooking? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's start prepping the veg. Um, and yeah, obviously you guys feel shout if you can't hear me and feel free to ask any questions or anything like that. But we're just gonna start chopping the onion. Um, and we'll chop it kind of finely, um, like dice it. Um, the oven is on, I think, for everybody. Um, we're going to put the cauliflower in as well in a minute. So we'll just do the onion and then we'll cut up the cauliflower. Okay. So you guys, how's your training in lockdown been? So I know you were all um, row at Wallingford Rowing Club. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we do. Who's, uh, who's going to lead on that one? You, Rob? Yeah, 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 I can talk about that. I've um, been doing lots of cycling, and it's been very nice to actually go somewhere and see parts of the world rather than backwards along the same part of the river. Uh, so that's, that's been right. Um, obviously, missed the whole of the summer season, so I'm about eight kilos heavier now than I would normally be at this time of year. <laughs> Just for lack of training. But... You're to wait on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a strong winter set, uh, season for you, is it, Rob? Already carrying the timber. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I've got to, got to push hard through it. All those, all those lovely herbs to look forward to over the dark, dark winter nights. Yeah, yeah it's obviously hard when you train all winter in the cold and that, mm -hmm. and then you look forward to the summer racing, and then... 45 to 50 minutes. Yeah. All gets postponed and whatever and then you just basically we just basically stay doing winter training through the summer which is, yeah um, i mean you've had the biggest postponement of the war haven't you how's how was that went gone down yeah i mean obviously there was like you were thinking it's gonna come and like it was more the uncertainty when there was talk of it being postponed but they hadn't actually said like it's definitely gonna happen um so actually once like all of athletes, I think, just don't like uncertainty. You know, you want to know what you're building towards. Um, yeah. So once we kind of knew, then you're like, okay, it's like, you have to like, obviously kind of deal with it, get your head around it. And then you're like, right, okay, the goal is change, let's like move on. Um, I just, while I was say that, I've just started prepping the cauliflower. So I'm just gonna take all the leaves off, take the, stalk off and then chop it into like little florets to roast it in the oven. So okay. you can so You're all good? Yep. Getting there, getting there. Yep, yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's obviously, it, it was challenging to start with to get your head around it, but then you know, once I got my head around it, it was like the goalposts have moved and you just, Recalibrate, I guess. What, what was the general vibe? Were some people happy to have another year to prep or a bit of frustration because it'd been building to this? Yeah, I reckon there's obviously definitely frustration in it. Um, but I'm always of the mindset that I think it depends on your situation individually. And I'm kind yeah. of always of the mindset of like, you can turn anything into a positive and exploit it to your, you know, to your benefit so for me I was like okay it's another year to get quicker um obviously I suffered with overtraining in 2018 um so I had to take a break then which I thought wasn't ideal um so it's like okay it's another year away from that year so you know all in all it's pretty you know positive to like yeah use that extra year to get to get faster um but yeah I think it just depends on where you are in your career and all that, and especially for the athletes that hadn't, hadn't been to the games. You know, they, we just had the team selected and then, you know, they were being selected for their first Olympics and they were like, oh, it's not happening. And that's, you know, it's gonna to be tough, isn't it? Um, 
But hopefully the main thing is it just get, it happens next year um, in whatever format it, it can. So, um, okay, so have you cut up, up the cauliflower? Yeah. Sorry? Yes. Yeah, I'm good. So just um, drizzling a little bit of olive oil and the turmeric. So we've got um, a tablespoon of turmeric and we just sprinkle that over the cauliflower um, with some olive oil before we put it in the oven. And I'm always quite like relaxed about the measurements of stuff like that. So you know, a little bit more, don't be as much, like just kind of go off feel if you like. That's what you mean. This is also where you're probably going to get your hands a bit dirty because you want to mix the olive oil and turmeric into the cauliflower. So your hands might go a bit yellow. Um, but turmeric is obviously very good for us, isn't it? With the um, anti inflammatory properties. So obviously, being an athlete and you guys growing, um, it's a good thing to eat and having um, your meals and stuff. Um, yeah, so are you guys like big foodies, enjoy cooking? Like have you done more cooking in lockdown or? I think Rob's done more uh, uh, baking and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've um, really gotten into baking over it um, and cooking as well. So uh, I used to be in the Navy and you never got to cook for yourself. It was all canteen food. So it's yeah. been, always been a bit of a treat to actually cook food the way you like it and that and really taking advantage you know bring it back to the training when you train all you want to do when you get in is throw calories down your face so actually being forced yeah. to stay at home has been really nice to take the time to cook and prepare nice food yeah definitely um so i put mine in the oven so just let me know once you guys are up there and then we can prep the other veg um, but yeah, I mean, um, food, like food, I definitely have got more passionate about food in the last few years. Like when I first started growing, like it was like 12 years ago. So I was like 20, 21 and I really didn't know much about cooking. Um, but then I lived with somebody who was really good at cooking and it kind of like increased my interest in it. And then I got more and more into it. And now I like do my own recipes and all that kind of stuff. So I, yeah, I, I kind of, um, Maybe it's a getting older thing or something, but I love cooking now. How are you guys doing? Yeah, um, I, still I still haven't put the cauliflower in yet. I'm trying to just ma marinate in the oil and turmeric. That's all right. I, know, I find one of the things that's so nice about cooking for yourself, you know exactly what goes into it. You know, you make a pizza from scratch, you know, there's no salt, no sugar in it. Whereas God knows what you get out of a packet. Yeah, it's very true, yeah. Is this uh, one of your own recipes then, Vicky? You, uh... yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously there's curries are, there's different spices you can put in them and things like this, but this is, yeah, this is one I kind of just like made up. Lovely. I hope it tastes all right. I haven't made it for a while. Yeah. So. Well, it's got a great combination of uh, the spices in there. Yeah, hopefully. Have you guys got back out on your floor yet? Yeah. Last weekend, first, first day we could, we were back out there. Oh, brilliant. How did it feel? Weird. Not as awful as it could have. I think we were <laughs> relieved that uh, it was all right. It was all right. It wasn't flopping about too much. Yeah, I, um, it was, was it last year? It was last week, last Monday. It was the first time I've been out sculling for five months because when they lifted the back, like when we could start going out sculling again, that's when I broke my elbow. So. Um, yeah, five months is like by far the longest I've been out of the boat for. The first session, you like expect it to feel rubbish, so you're like, it'll be okay, just go out and enjoy it and get your, get your legs back and such. And then yeah. um, the second, the next day, I was basically like, right, it should be fine now. And obviously, it's not going to be. <laughs> so, um, then I started getting annoyed that I couldn't balance well enough and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it is like riding a bike, isn't it? You get a couple of sessions and it starts to feel a bit more like normal. But, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, sorry, go on. I was just going to ask, what inspired the move over towards um, single sculling, Vicky? Do you agree? Yeah, good question. I 
I guess I, we spend we spend a lot of time in singles anyway in the winter training, uh, and then obviously moving to crew boats in the summer. Um, and I kind of always loved the single. Um, I've always found like watching the single sculling races, I would have loved to be quick enough basically to do that. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of like after after Rio, I was like, it's kind of going to go on for another four years. This is like a, I want it to kind of be like a, a personal journey, and that's what I want to target the single and you know do twenty seventeen in the single and see how quick I am. Uh, I'd done it before in twenty thirteen and fourteen, but it wasn't always, it wasn't the first plan um, for the season. And I'd finished like at the top of the B final, so seventh and then eighth. Um, so I was like, I want to see if I like totally target it where I can be. And then my first season in 2017, and it was went brilliantly. Um, and then kind of went on from there. But I've just always loved it. And I kind of think it's just, it's a kind of boat that you need to, um, it's just, you know, it's exposing, isn't it? Like you've got to, your weaknesses, you have to try and like overcome with your strengths and all that kind of stuff. Like everyone's got weaknesses, everyone's got strengths, but um, the single obviously exposes it completely because it's just you. Um, and I kind of love that about it. It's obviously an amazing boat to do well in, but when you do badly, it's pretty lonely. Um, but yeah, I just love it. I think it's not, obviously it's not for everybody and some people hate the single, but um, it's always something I've dreamt of being good enough to do. And so, yeah, I kind of went for it and it's, it's turned out all right so far. I'm obviously not as fast as I want to be yet, but still got some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got another year now. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we up to, should we just um, chop up, so we've got the onion chopped up, um, maybe heat the, the frying pan or any the kind of pan you're cooking the curry in. Yeah. Um, and we'll just, then we'll just chop, finally chop up the peppers. Um, and then we can put the onions and peppers into the frying pan. So how many um, how many entries did you guys put in for oh, Robert? Sorry for the um, for today. Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember now. But it was enough. It was enough. I thought this would be a great club thing to uh, squad thing to get us going again. So yeah. Yeah. Um, a, bit, but, a bit of crew bonding as well. Exactly, exactly. Oh, yes. yeah. So in uh, in Wallingford Rowing Club, I've got a reputation for being absolutely crap in a single and falling in all the time. When was the last time you fell in? Well, sorry? When was the last time you fell in? Uh, I actually fell in in 2017, literally a couple of weeks before the World Championships. Mm. Um, it was really windy at Caversham, as it often is. <laughs> Um, and my coach was like, I'm just going to stay with, so there was a few girls, sweet girls out in, in singles. He's like, I'm just going to stay up with this end with them, just check they're going to be all right. Obviously thinking that I'm going to the championships in the single, I'm not going to fall in. Um, and lo and behold, I just caught a wave as I was at the catch. And it was like game over straight away. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, not that long ago, but, um, it was funny because when I, I used, I started through World Class Start, which is very much like they throw you out in singles straight away and you do all these different skills and standing up and, and so you end up falling in a lot when you first start and you have to get back in your boat all the time, so learning to get back in your boat. Um, so I did that when I first started, I mean I, I started in November which wasn't ideal because I was falling in like that whole, the whole Christmas and that whole winter um, and then I, so yeah so I was used to getting back in the boat, obviously I hadn't done it for years. I think there was obviously an initial real shock that I was in the water. So, and within like a minute, I was back in the boat without even really thinking about it. I think like those old habits of, and that old um, kind of skill of getting back in the boat just came back to me after like probably, God, it must have been like 10 years before I'd fallen in or something. So yeah, so not that long ago. Um, and it is like, the single is easy to tip in, right? It's, if you get it quite a bit wrong, and especially in the wind, you know, um, Rob's the best at falling in out of a lot of us, so do tell you. Sorry? Yeah. Rob's the best at falling in out of a lot of us, so <laughs> you gave you some tips. Yeah, last time I went in, my feet got trapped and I pulled them so hard, I went halfway through my calf muscle with a tear. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was pretty unfun. <laughs> you have hill restraints on? Oh, uh, they snapped. Was... Oh no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
So I just, uh, ejected myself from the boat and uh, yeah, tore my calf really badly, really badly. How long did it take to recover from that? Um, you were for a good few weeks though, weren't you? Oh, definitely, definitely. And um, out for a good few weeks. And then me and Johnny did two sets and one pair's head. Just thought I'd slip that in. Oh, very good. Doing the pair's head comments, always. Where's pair's head, Rob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just throw it in there. Just throw it in there. I've never actually done pair's head. Yeah. Well, we were hoping that pair's head would be the first thing that might happen. But then since the uh, Hammersmith bridge is shut now, you can't roll under it, so whether or not it even runs, who knows? That's true, actually, yeah. Never thought about that. That was the one, the one thing we were hoping to look forward to was Pear's Head. Because there's, there's some un, unsettled business with that one, I think. Yeah, me and Ross have got bones of pit with Johnny and Rob. Yeah. <laughs> and Vicky? Yeah. How long do we? How long was the cauliflower and the, cauliflower and the onion for, of interest? Um, just like 30 minutes. All right. I might as well set a timer so I can remind myself. Is the onion meant to be in yet? I'll just... Um, we, yeah, if your pan's hot, we'll, we'll put in the onion and the peppers into the oh. rind pan. Did everyone else finish chopping? I'm so slow. Yeah, I've got my in already. I was... I pre-chopped some of my onions so I didn't start crying. <laughs> Very good. I'm just, I'm just asking my pepper now at the moment, so I'm be far behind. Yeah, so we just let the um, onions and peppers soften for a bit, and um, just like over a medium to high heat. So, um, have you and have you been on like a holiday, a staycation, or not yet? Not yet. I was, I was down in Cornwall a couple of weeks ago. Was it busy? Uh, well, not. It was fair, well, fairly busy, but not too busy. It was nice, nice to get, to nice to get after, after this, all that's been happening. Yeah, it's just nice to see different places, isn't it? And just like, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually off to um, I'm off to Sicily in a couple of weeks. Oh, lovely! So with uh, with, with with my family. Very nice. Fingers crossed that um, Italy stays stable then with everything. <laughs> That'll be nice. Yeah, we um, we actually got to Croatia um, a couple of weeks ago. I think we must have got the right time because obviously now you've got, um, you've got to they've brought in the um, quarantine when you get back. So luckily we weren't there when it, when that came in. So <laughs> yeah, we had to have a holiday. Well, Rich, it's stunning. Whereabouts were you? Um, so we went to we flew into Split and had a couple of nights in Split, and then um, went on to three of the islands. One called Vix, uh, went to Havar, which is like the party island, and then Korsula. And then we came back and had two nights on the mainland in a place called Trujir. Um, so last year we went to, flew into Dubrovnik and then went over to Montenegro. Um, but I've always been kind of put off going to Croatia properly because it's so busy. Uh, but this year, obviously, it was a lot quieter. So it was like the perfect place, the perfect kind of time to go. And it was like absolutely beautiful. Like the sea is just so clear. Yeah, it's stunning. Really nice. There um, last year cycling through it, and uh, the terrain is really tough. But it's so a bit further north than Split. I was um, quite a lot further north. Sort of came down through uh, from Hungary and then sort of looped around the top of it and went back into Slovenia. And wow. the terrain is really difficult, but what difficult cycling makes for like stunning views, doesn't it? So yeah. it's well worth it. Yeah. No, how, was, long, how long did you do that for? Uh, well, me and my partner did that for about three and a half months, just after um, Henley. We then spent three and a half months just cycling around Europe, which is... Which That's is really, amazing. Yeah, yeah, very lucky to have been able to do that. Don't get that sort of opportunity very often. No, definitely not. And um, so I've only been to Slovenia once when the World Championships were there in Bled. 
But yeah. I obviously went to Blair. I didn't um, go anywhere else, but it's somewhere I want to visit more because it's like... Lavinia's yeah, great too. Liviana's a fantastic city. Yeah. Definitely recommend Liviana. Um, so if your veg have started to soften, we'll probably start to add the um, spices now um, into the pan and just like let them lighten up a little bit before we put anything else in. So two tablespoons of garam masala. And then um, a tablespoon of ground cumin. Oh, I can already start smelling it, it smells amazing. Yeah, it smells great. Um, one teaspoon of some mustard seeds. And then as much chili as you can handle. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very individual. I'm gonna put in just a teaspoon. Um, I don't plan this probably to be really spicy, but some people might not want to put any chili in, that's fine. Um, I used to literally struggle to eat sweet chili sauce. I would have no capacity at all for spice. Um, but I seem to have got better with it over the years, and now I quite like spice. I actually really like it. So yeah, just stir those all in. It should start smelling pretty nice. And they should just like, I might just turn the heat down a little bit and just let them liven up in for like a minute or so. Um, I might just check on the um, cauliflower, maybe flip it and just check it's roasting okay. Oh, great. Cauliflower looks great. The turmeric really adds so much lovely colour to it, doesn't it? Yeah, I always think cauliflower is like an underrated veg. Like, I actually really like it, and I actually quite like eating it raw, which sounds weird. But it doesn't it's sound weird. Is this weird? It's <laughs> nice with like um, hummus dipped in hummus. Um, and obviously, because it's white, I'm like, oh, but I quite like cauliflower. And now, especially like a lot of recipes, like vegan recipes use cauliflowers like the, the centipedes, don't they? And they like bake it in like amazing spices and stuff like that. So how are we all getting on? Are we spices in, veg softened? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <coughs> this chili is gonna start going to the back of my throat now, probably. Um, let's put in the <laughs> the lentils, um, hopefully you've got some just pre-cooked ones or, or cooked ones that you cooked yourself. Um, We've all been to Waitrose. We've all been to Waitrose. We've all been to the same ones. We've all been to the same ones, same, same lentils then. <laughs> it's a bit, a bit more pricey buying them pre-cooked, but they're super easy to use, aren't they? And, um, I, I'm, I, I'm used to always have meat in every meal, but... Um, I've started eating more vegetarian. I still love meat, don't get me wrong, but I think lentils are a great alternative to like, um, to a lot of things. They're good, great in a curry, but also in chili. So instead of the beef, which often, because there's so many spices in chili, I always find, you know, it's more the texture of the beef rather than the taste of it. And so lentils, I remember I served my dad. I said, oh, dad, I'm cooking as a, curry, um, a chili tonight. He said, oh, great. I was like, yeah, it's vegetarian. He was like, oh, don't want that. I was like, just try it and see what you think. And he was like, oh, this is really nice. I wouldn't have even noticed any difference. So that was a good uh, reaction. So it's lentils instead of um, beef. Yes, we are adding the lentils now. I'm slightly, slightly behind. Yeah, yeah, um, just add the lentils and then um, we'll add, I'm not sure whether I put one or two tins of tomato, but I think we'll just put one in. It says one tin in the recipe, doesn't it? Sorry? I think it says one tin in the recipe. Does it? Okay, that's good. Because that's, yeah, that's right. Um, so just put the tomatoes in. Um, Ross, were you just tensing then? 
Sorry, mate. He just looked really strong. Were you tensing? I was just opening the tin. That's, oh, that's what happens. Oh, yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> you've got to remember, when you're, when you're taking a drink, you just roll your hand slightly as well. That helps. Thank, thanks for noticing, though, Johnny. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome, mate. <laughs> you uh, not going to comment on me, or...? Sorry, mate, I wasn't paying attention. All oh, right, don't worry, mate. <laughs> Um, oh, just whilst we're doing this, maybe um, put on the kettle so to, we can put the we can put the rice on in a few minutes. Okay. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm guessing you've got um, white rice, so it just takes like eight to ten minutes to cook. Is that? Yeah. That's what I'm factoring in. Oh, just yeah, you know, it'd be super helpful. We'd have whole grain, but it takes too long to cook. So. <laughs> So, once you've heated the tomatoes through, um, we can look to give the coconut milk a shake and put that in. I've just got to go and rescue a cat, so I'll be back in a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel that needs to explain a bit more than just that. Yeah. <laughs> Is he a firefighter or something? <laughs> I think, he, I think he owns a cat, it's not just like a rogue cat. Oh. So how is the elbow after your accident, Nikki? It's good, thank you, yeah. Um, I actually just got like discharged from the surgeon yesterday and says we had our last like checkup, which I think, I think, it, I want to say it's been 12 weeks now. Or 11, 11 or 12 weeks. So, um, yeah, it's um, it's good. I'm back rowing. I'm back on the ergo, back doing weights. Um, just getting like, so with the elbow, my tricep, you can't basically if you use your tricep, even though it was fixed by like plates and screws and stuff. But if you use your tricep, that would be pulling on the fracture site. So you had to really be conscious of not doing like anything above head or anything like that so you weren't loading a tricep so my tricep had gone that for six weeks it had totally gone to sleep um so it's now just about building the strength back over my tricep and then generally upper body because i couldn't do upper body weights um for a while so loads of what baking sorry loads of what baking instead of airing i guess yeah it was a lot of what baking going on <laughs> um the, the good thing about the walk bike is I like a trust that you'll be really fit off the back of it. Like I know a lot of people do a long period of rehab and come back off the walk bike and uh, like pull PBs on the ergo and stuff. So yeah. it's a really good mode of training, but you just have to do longer on the walk bike than you do on the ergo to get the same training benefit. Um, I'm just going to put the water now in the saucepan for the rice and just bring it to the boil. But I actually, as long as I'm, as long as I can train, like I'm kind of happy, it's like, because um, you feel like you're moving towards something rather than being kind of like stuck in limbo and not improving. Whereas it's like, okay, well, I can't be on the ergo, I can't lift weights properly, but I can do loads of hours on the watt bike. And, you know, the mental side of doing three, four hours at a time on the watt bike is going to, you know, it's going to mentally make you better. Um, because it's just obviously really really boring so you have to learn to like switch off and whatever but um i actually quite enjoyed like the different you know it's a different challenge and so i quite enjoyed that how do you feel about putting on like podcasts and stuff when you when you're on the walk bike are you like no i've got to be in the zone i'm just gonna churn away no yeah i do <clears throat> i do listen to podcasts um and not on not on the ergo but on the walk bike and because I was often do my first session on the walk bike in the morning, I would listen to the radio. Um, and then sometimes I'd actually watch some Netflix on my phone. So I actually got into the series on Netflix called Dynasty. So it was a remake of the old Dynasty. Um, and it was like proper cheesy, um, but very kind of like, you know, lots of amazing outfits, but it's all about this really rich family. So it was um, kind of perfect walk bike watching. So I went through like three seasons of it. <laughs> um because it's just like perfect for that kind of that kind of thing um really easy watching and you don't really have to concentrate 
But then if I was doing like pieces, so I was having to push myself and concentrate on the watts and everything like that, I would just listen to music or I wouldn't have anything on. Um, so, yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna let that simmer now, the curry. Um, I'm gonna give it a little taste and see if it needs any more of anything. I may have overdone the chili flakes ever so slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Be fine. I'm gonna probably just try mine and see why it's mine. Oh, delicious. It's quite creamy, it's quite nice. Yeah, very good. Have you got any podcast recommendations then? Um oh, podcast recommendations. One that I um really like is um a guy called oh what is his name? Um He's like an ultra athlete, uh, Rick Roll, his name is. Um, and he does like insane ultra challenges and stuff like that. And he gets like really amazing guests on. And they, they're quite long. So some of them are like 90 minutes or something. So some, you have to kind of sometimes do them in like stages. But he gets some really good guests on. Um, and I also like um, one called the, the Food Medic. It's a girl I follow on Instagram. And she's a doctor, but like specializes in nutrition and stuff. And she gets quite good good um, people on it. It's all kind of like really sound advice. Um, and you know, because a lot of nutrition stuff and stuff on the internet can be really confusing, can't it? And a lot of it can just be a load of rubbish. Whereas it's quite nice to have somebody who gets guests on that you can like trust their expertise and stuff. Yeah, I can't um, work for if I did. Right, are you um, all right to put the rice on now? Yeah. yeah. I'm actually just going to rinse mine quickly in the sieve. Bring your camera to reach the sink. <laughs> so who who are you guys cooking the um, meal for tonight? Anyone else or just yourselves? Me. Hello. Hello. That's Sophia. Yes, it is. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. It's very nice in here, so I'm quite looking forward to um, being cooked for. Oh, nice. Good change. Are you the one that normally does the cooking? We actually, we actually had a 50-50 depend on who's doing what. But yeah. they start training again, then yes. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fab. Well, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. No, it smells delicious. Johnny, is your cat okay? Pardon? Oh yeah, the cat. The cat yeah, yeah. It had climbed up a very rickety fence and was looking quite distressed because it couldn't quite jump onto the roof. Oh, and then they misjudged it, so no. don't let's go no, around. No, no. <laughs> oh, okay. They're still in that kitten stage whereby they're over ambitious. Oh. <coughs> Right, I think the, I actually think the, my, I think my cauliflower's done, so I'm going to get out the, out the other one, but... Right, that was, yeah, that's basically all right, yeah. Um, Vicky? Hi, Derek, Yeah, I'm just, is that because I'm cooking for my mum and dad and my my younger sister, how much rice for would you say goes between four people? I normally do like a small, like a, um, three small kind of palmfuls, if that makes sense. Well, what, um, what, what I've done it before is I use like, a, I've done like half a cup or three quarters of a cup of rice sometimes. Yeah, I, did, that's, I, I never know what it is in weight, that's just how I measure it out. And um, I, it's uh, really easy to do too much rice, isn't it? It is actually. Never had too much rice. So, um, just to know where we're up to, I have the curry's on, it's simmering. Um, I've taken the cauliflower out of the oven um, and the rice is on. Um, so that's got another like five or six minutes. And then in a couple of minutes, I just put the cauliflower and the spinach into the curry and just like that spinach like wilt down. Um, so everyone doing all right? Yes, that's all. Yeah, all good. Cool. 
putting the rice on now. Okay, perfect. That's good. So how long have you been there? My cauliflower. You what? It does double. I'm just, I'm just going to turn my cauliflower and probably take it out of the oven now. Okay. I've just snuck a bit of cauliflower and it's delicious. I'm going to oh, do good. just that more often, I think. That's lovely. Nice. So how long have you been born with this Do you guys a fan of like vegetables or do you always have to like force yourself to eat them? Well, I'm, I'm vegetarian, so I should eat a lot. Oh, okay. Crazy. Oh, so it's good that we did a veggie meal for you tonight then. Yeah, yeah no, very handy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, my, uh, my, my wife's vegan, so we, oh, wow. this is kind of normal for us. So oh, okay. Kind of eat vegan veggie. <laughs> pretty much every other night anyway, so it's kind of, it's really good. Yeah. Looking forward to it. It's, so, I think now you can do so many, like, there's so much more um, recipes out there for veggies and vegan, obviously, because it's more popular. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've always loved vegetables, and I, if we go on holiday and, like, there's not enough, like, there's often you have to like go out your way to get enough vegetables in and I always come back home like craving vegetables. <laughs> um, <laughs> when, when you go away, can you kind of switch off and just enjoy the downtime or do you sort of stay on it in terms of nutrition and even training? No, I do, I do relax things like that. I mean, I, I generally like kind of all food um, and so I'll, you know, I'll eat, you know, what people might say is like, not athlete food so ice creams and you know have have a beer have some wine on holiday and stuff like that um but generally i like eating healthy i just wouldn't eat, like i don't really like fast food so i wouldn't just go on holiday and eat fast food for two weeks because that's what i want to do like because it just makes you feel rubbish doesn't it yeah. um but no i do relax things and i i used to be quite find it really hard to switch off on holiday and like i would often try and find it hard to actually rest and not do training whereas this year i kind of like force myself to have two weeks of like basically apart from just general activity on holiday um walking and stuff like total rest because i knew that my body needed it um and i felt so much better for it but like previously i found it really hard to do that um what but, is there in your program for actually listening to, to your body and training to its needs rather than just pushing it and pushing it and pushing it yeah, I think I obviously, I kind of used to think probably I was a bit bulletproof until I got over training and then I realised there is a limit to how far you can push things. Um, so, like, I probably learned my lesson there and try, well, try to, yeah, try to learn my lesson anyway, <laughs> trying to change things to make sure I don't get in that position again. Um, and yeah, because we literally train every single day pretty much. Some days we have off, like, every three weeks or something, but you know, otherwise you're doing two or three sessions a day. It's like a lot of load on your body, isn't it? So sometimes it is better. I'm just gonna open a window. It's very hot in here. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put the cauliflower in for the curry and the spinach. I'm also aware with rope, like, I don't know if you guys find the same because you guys are Romans, like your perception of what a meal size is is quite warped. <laughs> definitely, definitely <Absolutely> distorted. <laughs> um, so people would probably think that this is like for like six people, but um, no, it's probably like I think it is more than enough for like for four. But yeah, um, we're obviously getting back into training now, so our training is less than usual when we're, when we're in it full time. So we start back on the 1st of September kind of properly. So we're doing a bit less training at the moment. So um, you obviously have to re remind yourself you're doing less training so your portions can't be <laughs> as big and you don't eat, you need to eat five times a day. So the spinach might just take a little bit of time to like wilt down but so do you usually put all of it in at once or just a handful at a time? Yeah, I guess as much as you can fit in and it'll like obviously get a bit less as it starts to heat and stuff. I'm gonna be, I, I put 250 grams I think, but just put in kind of as much as you think is, I, mean, might, I might have a little bit more water, like just a bit of, um, put some water in the tomato can and just add a bit more so it just looks like there's a little bit more, um, 
Liquid. I'm probably just gonna probably go do four handfuls for four people for the four of us. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a good portion per person, isn't it? It's funny, um my my fiance Rick is very much like he has to follow a recipe to the absolute letter, like it's like doing a science experiment. <laughs> Whereas I'm a bit more like, ah, oh, that, that looks about right, just bung that in, whatever. Um nice. so when he's cooking, like I stay out of the kitchen because he just gets annoyed. <laughs> oh, sometimes I'm like that when I'm cooking. I get a bit, I get a little bit stressed trying to get everything sorted. Yeah, it's like often it's timings, isn't it? Like getting everything ready at the right time. Yeah. So I have now put my spinach, I haven't put the whole bag in actually, so it's probably like 200 grams. Um, in, I'm just checking the rice. Need a couple more minutes. Um, but I do think we're we're far off now. If you if you guys are still feel like doing all right. Yeah. 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 All good. Yep. Yeah, looking good. Pretty good. And, and uh, I don't know if you're willing to reveal your secret, Spiffy, but. Go on. Yeah. Nice for, for trying to kind of like peak at the right time because for us our our aim as a as a four is peaking at Henley Royal Regatta, but it must be even harder for you as it's like trying to peak for one point in every four years rather than every year. Do you have any sort of like that you'd be willing to give for how you try and achieve that? But it's often that sort of a lot down like physically is down to the program that's written. So Obviously, we have the program written and it's about making sure you do that to the best of your ability. Um, but also, you know, so we train, rowing is very much like train a lot in the winter, you know, like big miles, lots of time in the gym. And then as the summer comes around, you're starting to sharpen up. So we, we still keep volume in our training in the summer, and especially the last like month before the World Championships. That's another big block of training. But um, it's, you know, it's about making sure you're doing enough training in the winter period so then you can and you do that consistently and you're like yeah you're consistent in your training so then when it comes to the taper you know you feel like you, you're ready to taper and it's like you're looking forward to that taper and freshening up and then you then you feel, find then you start fe feeling the speed and seeing the efforts of the winter yeah. um so yeah i think it's just about having a, a really good training program and plan for the year um so you're putting the work in at the right times. And if you're peaking for Henley, obviously you're going to do some regattas before that. So I, I guess Marlow, is that one of the yeah, regattas? We, so we run Walling, we do, as we normally do, it's the three Dorney ones. So Wallingford, which we, which we run, Metropolitan and Marlow. So those are, those are the three main ones we normally do before Henley. Yeah, so it's about um, obviously racing them and getting like good results and getting confidence behind you but still maintaining the training so you're not on like a constant a constant taper so you kind of lose fitness so it's about getting the right balance there so we you know we have world cups before um the world championships and we'll taper a little bit for the world cups but you know we our main taper will be and the longest taper will be for the world championships just so we're not you know we're still keeping that volume in and keeping the um like the endurance base big so yeah it's about having a plan and then being consistent with your training especially over the winter i'd say does that help at all yeah yeah no it's, it's uh very useful advice it's what everyone tells us to do and we fail to do quite a lot <laughs> <laughs> well you know it's easy it's easy i'm a full-time athlete so it's kind of my job so you have to juggle work and everything with it it's a bit more challenging okay i think my rice is done so I'm going to drain the rice. Again, rice is always something I find really hard to get exactly right in terms of cooking it. Um, yeah, where are you guys up to? You Rice is nearly done, is it? Curry? I think mine's good. Yeah, I'm ready to rock and roll, definitely. Oh. Minus two minutes to go, still a bit crunchy. Still a little bit 
It's al dente at the minute. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's still all And do you I have a, a moment to just sort of talk through Kids Out as well? It's a, an organisation I've never heard of before. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, great um, to bring that up. Yeah, so they um, <laughs> are a charity that help and support disadvantaged children. So a lot, they go into like women's refuges. So women that have had to um, leave home for a variety of reasons and w with their children. Um, the Women's Refuge obviously supports the, the women and the children, but kids out go in and um, help out the kids and take them on like, obviously at the moment they don't do days out because, hang on, sorry. I just started mowing the lawn. Um, they don't do days out because of the situation we're in now, but they're like putting together toy boxes and things like that. So they just support disadvantaged kids around the country, which it's an, it's an amazing charity and one of the good things is it you know they don't have much admin costs um they're they're relatively small so they've actually missed out on half a million pounds of funding this this year like july to july so because obviously that the fundraising and things hasn't taken place like usual yeah, yeah. um so they yeah so they've kind of they're still supporting everything like that but they're really struggling with with their funding but they're a very small charity so i think it's you know, a lot of time, the money you donate, some of it has to go to admin costs, of course, but they, I think it's 81 pence of every pound that you donate goes actually to the children. So it's a very, that's a really good percentage for a charity. So they're very efficient with how they get their money to the people in need. So, um, yeah, and I, I, I went, I've been involved for a few years now with them, but lovely people that run it and, you know, it's just, the small charities are often the ones that struggle the hardest, aren't they, in these in these kind of times. So, um, yeah, it's great to have had this opportunity to try and raise a little bit of money for them. Yeah, fantastic. That sounds really worthy. Yeah. So thanks to you guys for donating. <laughs> and Johnny, you work for a charity as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. I work for um, a local charity to the area in Didcot called Sophia. Okay. Uh, we do a combination of, of different things, and one of them is supporting um, youngsters who have been disadvantaged in some way through whether it's learning difficulties or behavioural issues issues at school, which are because of other sort of social factors that come into play. Um, yeah, so so it sounds it sounds like there's quite a lot of alignment there, and I think it's it's a, a great course by the sound of it. Oh, brilliant. Oh. Great. So, um, are we ready to taste soon? Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'll good, yeah. I can um, leave you guys to go and we'll have a taste, see what you think, and then leave you guys to go and share with families if that's what you want. If that's what you'd like that's to do. Fantastic. Great. That's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so do you have a little taste? Oh, that's terrific. And it's really good because I, I've never managed to nail the curry recipe before. Okay. This is, this is a really good uh, addition to the recipe book for me. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. How do you like it? It's delicious, Vicky. First time, actually, first time I've ever made a curry. Oh, good. That's, that's good to hear. Yeah, because in the past, I've never made a curry because I've always, in the past, I've like, done burnt, made burnt. Done. Most done. I made stir fries before, which were a little bit slightly more similarly complicated, but it's a bit more fun. But this that curry is very good. Brilliant. Well, I'm glad you like you guys like it. So um, yeah, really tasty. And I hope anyone who's tuned in on YouTube has um, enjoyed the evening, and I hope they also enjoy the the food if they cook along with us. Um, so I guess this is where I leave you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vicky. That was absolutely awesome. Thank you. Thank, you very much. Thank you so much for the support of the charity. And it's been really good fun um, meeting you guys. And best of luck with getting back in your fall. And fingers crossed, Henley least happens next year because that will be good for everyone. <laughs> Excellent. Good luck at the Olympics. Thank you. Thanks, Vicky. Thank you. Take care.